Well, ladies and gents, Space Jam 2, a new legacy, has obliterated the box office and absolutely slam dunked, oh, I'm so punny, uh, Black Widow into the abyss. So, it's what we're going to be covering today, ladies and gents. Uh, it's, it's essentially how I predicted it to go. Uh, not too much of a surprise. I really did think Black Widow would fall off massively in its second week, and it has, um, which does go some way to, I, I guess, maybe flying in the face of what Disney had purported their takings to be. FYI, if you notice any uh, residue on my face, it is hot as balls in the UK at the moment, and I'm sweating. Obviously, clearly. So just as a heads up on that. Uh, side note, ladies and gents, just real quick before we get into this. This is the final week you have access to my Blu-ray for Breaking Lights. You can find it linked in the description box. It is a Blu-ray only. It does say pre-order. Uh, it's basically buy it now. You have to buy it and then it will be shipped in a week or so's time. So it is a pre-order in that sense. Uh, but this is the final week, so final call. Don't sleep. It's limited edition. It is only available on Blu-ray. Go grab it now. Link in the description box. But let's dive into this, shall we, ladies and gents? Um, like I said, it's not so much of a surprise. This, these numbers come from The Hollywood Reporter. They actually do a pretty good breakdown of it. But there's some other numbers which are actually better, uh, which I'm going to run by in a moment as well. So, LeBron James's Space Jam 2 and New Legacy uh, reigned supreme this weekend. I'm really surprised this did well. I'm really surprised this did well because it is getting absolutely appalling reviews not just from critics from from normal people as well um i've got a screener which i've been putting off watching but i'm going to be watching it either today or tomorrow and then i'll give you my review uh, of the film and we'll see whether it is as bad as what people are saying but basically space jam a new legacy uh beat holdover black widow to top the chart with a better than expected domestic debut so that's just america north america uh 31.7 million dollars but here's the clincher from nearly 4,000 theatres. I'd expect it to do better. With 4,000 theatres open, I would expect it to do better than that, but apparently it is also available on HBO Max, so maybe that's why it's not doing quite as well. But it did smash the box office, right? So Marvel and Disney's Black Widow fell to number two in its second outing with $26.3 million. Uh, the superhero pick suffered a steep 67% decline, nearly 70% in its second weekend by comparison to its first weekend. Now the real number, the real number which I find fascinating is Friday to Friday, it dropped 80%. It dropped 80% because on Friday, it only took 8 million. So it really didn't catch that much more across the, the rest of the weekend, um, which is not a surprise because I, I did my review of this movie. I knew it was gonna be pretty, well, it's kind of a movie which is like, what's the point at you know at, at this stage of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? They're trying to push things forward. This movie serves as just an introduction to another character. It's not really uh, a solo movie for Black Widow. It is quite literally just a vehicle to introduce a new Black Widow moving forward. And that's a shame, because those crying out for a Black Widow uh, solo movie would be looking at this going, well, that's not what I wanted. And everyone else would be looking at this going, why, why is she alive? What's going on? Normies, anyway. So there you go. 80% decline Friday to Friday, 67% uh, drop off. Now here's here's the, the, the massive cope from the Hollywood Reporter, right? The superhero pick suffered a steep 67% decline. One of the biggest drop one of the biggest drops ever for a Marvel title, and the worst among the Marvel films released by Disney. The decline underscores that the box office recovery is far from over. Sorry? What about Godzilla vs. Kong? What about... What are you talking about, mate? What about all these other movies that come out of absolutely... You know, they, they've nearly taken like 500 million worldwide. What are you talking about? Good sir. Marvel comes out. Oh, it doesn't do very well. People are like, oh, the box office isn't recovering. Oh, it's just... Oh, it's on the decline. No, it's got nothing to do with that. It's literally got nothing to do with that. There was, there was, a, there was a, like a horror movie that came out. Um, that was like a, a pretty decent one, I think, if I remember rightly. They did, did pretty well as well. It's because they're bad films. The absolute cope from The Hollywood Reporter here is utterly... I mean, it's very transparent, anyway. And they go even further, right? Also, the tentpole is available in the home via Disney Plus Premier Access. Piracy is another problem. What about all the other movies doing very, very well, then? Huh? What about the other movies? 
What about Godzilla vs. Kong that opened on less theatres? Oh, honestly, uh, baffling. Absolutely baffling. I thought we'd have a good chuckle about that. I mean, it is absolute cope from the Hollywood Reporter there. But there you go. I mean, I, I think this, this underpins it all, ladies and gents. Quite literally, the worst among the Marvel films released by Disney. It is the biggest drop ever for a Marvel title. And I think this this does go some way to showing uh, people that superhero fatigue is absolutely a thing. Good movies are good movies. So if a good movie is released, regardless of superhero fatigue or not, people will go and watch it. But this is not, you know, this isn't people going, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's a case of superhero fatigue as well as the fact that it's just a bad movie. But yeah, one of the worst uh, for a Marvel title. Um, well, one of the biggest drops for a Marvel title and, and the worst among the Marvel films released by Disney. And it's funny because last week people were trying to do like, oh, adjusted for inflation and, oh, yeah, no, it just pops in under here on actually the solo movie level. Ah, just the cope that they have for Disney. And I get it because Disney literally boycotts them otherwise. They go, no, you, you won't have access to anything. That's what they do. They shut them down. So there you go. I, did Disney lie with respect to the amount on take home uh, in in the the home situation, the home platform on Disney streaming? I believe so, because I mean, look at that: sixty-seven percent, eighty percent Friday to Friday, massive drop off. Anyway, so Warner Brothers actually expected Space Jam two to open in the twenty million range in North America. That would have been a problematic start, but because uh, amazingly, this film cost one hundred and fifty million dollars to make. Why? It's majority of it. It's, it's most of it's just shot on a soundstage, and it's all CG. You're just spaffing this money up the walls, Warner Brothers. What are you doing? You're also putting someone uh, front and center. LeBron James can't act for Toffee. Terrible actor. He's not well liked worldwide. You guys in the states might absolutely adore him and bow to his feet, but worldwide, no one knows him. No one cares about LeBron James. In the UK, no one cares about LeBron James. Basketball's not a thing over here. We don't care about it. But the Looney Tunes people care about, but they've not been popular for God knows how long. Such strange decisions Warner Brothers make. Very, very short. 150 million for this. I bet you someone's getting fired. Anyway. The film instead was, uh, well, it shot to an A- minus cinema score uh, and an ethnically diverse audience. I mean, what does that matter? What? Jesus. Anyway, overseas, where numerous markets are still impacted by the pandemic, because of course that's still something that we're banging on about, uh, the film opened to a tepid 23 million from 64 territories for a global start of 54.7 million. 54.7 million for $150 million to make. Now, we can probably chuck on at least another $75 million for marketing, right? And then you've got 50-ish percent ticket sales going to uh, the studio. Yeah, someone's being fired. Someone is 100% being fired uh, for Space Jam, a bad legacy. Anyway... So North America Space Jam 2 scored the biggest opening for a family title in the pandemic era, despite poor reviews, growing concerns, and then again, banging on about this Delta variant, uh, new mask mandates in LA. Um, whatever, like that's not going to affect it that much. Good movies are good movies. People will keep going out to watch good movies. That is just what it is. Anyway, among ticket buyers, this is the interesting part. 61% were under 25, including 49% under 17 the film skewed male overall, 54%. Um, uh, apparently, they even have it ethnic breakdown as well. Caucasians made up 35%, followed by blacks, 31%. Um, Latinos, 27%. Asians, 4%. Is this what we're doing on box office breakdowns now? We literally go by skin color as well. This is mental. Basically, it's bombing. It is absolutely bombing. And it's only really appealing to kids. Because the people that would have watched the first one have gone and looked at this and gone, this looks terrible. Because the trailers were awful. But I'll know soon enough because I've got it and I'm going to watch it and I will give you my review. But there you go. Black Widow, ladies and gents. Bombed. What a shame. And I do say a shame. Well, no, maybe not a shame, actually. I mean, it's a shame when any movie bombs, to be fair. I want all movies to be good. I personally didn't... I didn't hate it. It's just not a particularly great movie in any aspect. There were some laugh-out-loud bad moments as well. Um, but it's 
it's not necessarily a shame because maybe this will shake Marvel up a little bit. You know, again, outside of the cope from the Hollywood Reporter here. Maybe it'll shake Marvel up and they'll actually pull their finger out uh, and make some decent changes moving forwards. But we'll see. Anyway, what do you guys think? Is this a case of uh, superhero fatigue, bad movie, combination of the two? And what do you think about Space Jam 2, uh, a bad legacy? Let me know. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, ladies and gents. If you are new here, please do hit subscribe. You stayed this long. You clearly enjoyed the video, so hit that subscribe button on your way out. Whilst you're there, hit that like button. Thanks so much. Take care.